This episode of Spectre Sound Studios is brought to you by ThePlaidZebra.com. The Plaid Zebra, helping you find the answer to the question, what the fuck am I going to do with this diploma? Hey guys, I've got a ton of requests for this one. How do you dial in an amp? And fortunately, it's a fairly straightforward operation. And for this, you're going to need one guitar cabinet one tube amplifier head. I'm going with a 5150 as it's quite popular and many of you have one. A chair, a microphone, a microphone stand, earplugs or isolation headphones, a mini mag light, and no, it's not for the bass player. A broadsword. Yes, it's for chasing the bass player away when he inevitably comes up to you and asks, uh, what you doing? Okay, the most critical thing before we hook up a mic is this hook your amp and cab up together in the same room. Place the chair in front of it and make sure you're roughly at ear level with the cabinet. If you can't do this, you might as well quit right now and go pick up a bass because you'll be that fucking useful. Seriously, this is absolutely critical. Now neutralize your amp's EQ and keep the gain low and turn the volume all the way down. Plug in your guitar, no overdrive at this point, and bring the volume up to a comfortable level. We don't want to blast it at this point. Bring up your gain so the tone saturates, yet remains clear enough for note definition. We do not want to overdo this. If you want to err on the side of caution, go with the cleaner setting, because you can always quad track your guitars later for thickness. Now, both channels on the 5150 are great for rhythm tone, but the green adds a little more thickness. And I'm going to go with that for right now as I'm playing my Schecter Hellraiser tuned to drop C. Keep in mind the green channel may be a little bit too sludgy for a 7 string and drop A. The key here is to experiment and see what works best for you. Now, when dialing in your tone, it's best to start shaping with the EQ section first and leave the power amp adjustments for later. Work from left to right. The settings I like to use are bass at 6, mids at 2, treble at 9. It's fairly scooped and it works well as the 5150 has a very pronounced mid-range. Now bring in the power section controls. Increase the resonance till the sound starts to fill out, add in presence, and you'll hear the guitar open up in the top. It's very important to be sparing with the presence control. The sweet spot on this amp is right in the 7.5 to 8.5 range. If you go past that, you'll make your tone shitty and brittle. Next, set up your mag light on a mic stand and put it up against the grill cloth on a 45 degree angle so the light spills over the dust cap of the speaker. Put your earplugs in. Now, keeping an eye on the speaker, play chugs and increase the volume until the speakers start to move. This is another critical spot. We want speaker excursion, but again, we don't want to overdo it. Speakers moving too hard are going to add their own fucked up compression to the guitar sound, and that's a bad thing. Now, proceed with caution at this next part. You might want to consider removing your earplugs if you can't discern what I'm getting at, but I do not recommend it. Exposing your hearing at this sort of volume is dangerous, so please use protection. And yes, for all you crybabies, this is considerably louder than the beginning of how to get your band ready for the stage part two. You want to gently increase your volume to the point where you can hear cabinet resonance. This is going to be a low end hum or a wash. And believe me, you're gonna know it when you hear it. Once you hit that point, which should be not very much louder than the point where the speakers start moving, you're good to go. On this amp with this cab, it's at about the 2.2 mark on the post game control. Now write down your settings at this point. Next, unplug your head and bring it into your control room if you have one. Then mic up your amp. See how to record heavy guitar if you don't know how to do it already. Next, fire up your amp from the control room. At this point, you may want to make some slight tweaks to the tone, but for the most part, you should be close to being dialed in. Check your settings against what you've written down in case you've bumped a knob in the process of moving the head. Generally, I'll play the treble against the presence control, with the treble control taking priority. It has the bite where the presence control has the fizz. At this point, if I need any more gain, I'll add an overdriver in for a clean boost. In this case, I'm using a Maxon OD820, as my 808 has a cracked circuit board after years of abuse and I really need to get out the soldering iron. By the way, if you guys want to see a tutorial on soldering for home studios, let me know. 
Now that we're dialed in, let's see how it sounds in a mix. I brought in my good friend TJ Dalhaniak to play drums on this one. And no, I'm not triggering a sample on the snare. The trigger is being used for something else, and I will show you guys what that's all about when I get into the upcoming drum recording tutorials. Until then, if you like my video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Leave a question or a comment, and I will get back to you if I can. Please share this video with your friends, and I'll see you next week.